Hello everyone, it's John here again with another 100 hours over the past week in Elite Dangerous. I am now over 200 hours in like three-ish week. It's crazy. But for a game where people say, oh, I only have 500 hours, it's really not that much. But, you know, three weeks. I'd like to start off by saying a very big thank you to all the love and support that I received on my last video. I thank everyone who watched, liked, and subscribed. It really means a lot to me. I wasn't expecting that much support or that many likes or comments, so it really means a lot. Thank you so much, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and I hope this video is helpful to you. From my last video, I received a few messages about what to do when you first start out or how the game actually plays, you know, how you can get out there and do what you want. I also saw this on the Elite Dangerous Reddit, which you should join. It's a great community over there. Everybody is super friendly and supportive. So this video is going to go through some of the basics that I wish I knew when I started out in the game and that the game doesn't explain very well. And also how I made my first 50 million fast so I could start working on ships and things that I wanted to do. Just an FYI, this will be using Odyssey as that is what I use. We are going to start with the basic. If you already have a good idea of the basics and fundamentals of the game and just want to know how to make your first 50 million quickly then skip to this part here i also have linked it in the description so first of all when you launch the game you'll have an option to do the tutorial i highly recommend doing this this is not one of those games where you'll want to skip the tutorial after the tutorial mission you will be in your sidewinder i'm in a crate mark 2 here but all of the unit user panels are the same in each ship so you can follow along with me when you're in your ship you're going to be confronted with a lot at first so let's go through them together you can either free look by just pressing the middle mouse button or by pressing one on the keyboard to look at your first panel this is the navigation panel here you can see what is close to you in the system that you are in and also target points of interest to highlight them for travel you can also access the galaxy map here if you press e you will go to the next tab in any window here is the transactions tab in this tab you can see what missions you, you have active if you have any combat bonds or bounties to hand in or if you have any fines or bounties on you from crimes that you've committed. With the next tab is the contacts tab, which you can see anyone or any, any item within your direct sensor range. If you free look or press the key button two, you will come to the chat and message panel. First tab is in-game chat. So NPCs and players will talk to you and relay messages to you in this chat panel. The next tab is the messages tab and it is here you will receive quest messages and other stuff pertaining to quests or engineers. Pressing 3 will bring you to your loadout and if you have any SRVs or ship launched fighters installed on your ship. Pressing 4 will bring you to the final panel. Here you can see your basic information like what rank you are in certain things like exploring or trading or combat and also access, the, access to the news and further training among other things like power play. The next tab is the modules you have installed into your ship. This will tell you their health and how much power they are taking up. The next tab is the fire group selection. This will show you what your ship can actively do. do. If you have weapons, scanners or shield cells, for example, they will appear here. One is left mouse click and two is right mouse click. As you can see here, I have my weapons in the same group tab as my sensors. That's because the sensors can be used in analysis mode and the weapons can be used in combat mode so they don't overlap. I'd recommend spending some time here to find out what, what works best for you because there is a plethora of combinations that you can use. The next tab is your ship. It will show you the basic information here as well as statistics. Inventory is everything that is in your ship from cargo to quest items and materials for crafting. Storage is what you have on your person. Stats is where you can find your relationship to other factions as well as what permits you have and your finance. So those are the panels and you'll get used to them quickly. Next we'll go over travel and reading your map HUD. In the center of your ship is your map. You may see a lot of shapes and stuff going on and it can be confusing. The full yellow squares are NPCs that are near you. If they are filled in yellow triangles then the NPCs have their hard points deployed. Hard points are your weapons that you deploy by pressing U and you can also change between combat mode and analysis mode by pressing M. If the squares or triangles are just outlines and are hollow, then this means that they are other real players, not NPCs. On the right of the dashboard, you can see your ship as a hologram with circles around it and a percentage. This is your ship shields and below that is your ship hull health. To the right of that are your system pip. You can and should adjust these depending on what you're doing. You can do this by pressing the arrow keys. For example, you would adjust more pips into the weapon section when you're in combat. To the right of that, you can see your fuel. If you're jumping to a new system, there will be a white line. This is to show you how much fuel you will use by doing that jump. Below that is three boxes, mass lock, landing gear, and cargo scoop. 
The bottom two are obvious, but the mass lock means that you are too close to a large object like a space station or planet and you cannot use your frameshift drive and will have to move away. Moving back to the middle map, in the top left corner, you will also see a circle with crosshairs in it. This shows that you, what you have targeted, and if it is a filled in white circle, you are facing it, and if it is hollow, it's behind you. To the left of that will be a hologram of whatever you have targeted, and below that it's shields and whole health. So now let's move on to movement and frameshift drives. You have two forms of movement within a system. Regular movement, using your ship's engines and thrusters, and then frameshift drive movement, using your frameshift drive. This is called super cruise while in system. Ship engine movement is simple to understand with W for forward, S for back, and depending on your key binds, Q and E for pitch and yaw. Also, your ship turns faster on its side like this. So make sure that you are turning optimally. Also, you can see your speed on the right of your ship map. Here, there is also a white line next to the speed. This is your optimal turning rate. So at the corresponding speed to the white part, you will turn the fastest. Make sure you're always turning the fastest. Ship controls are easy to learn and incredibly hard to master. It will take time to get good and even, th and even then you will still learn new things. Frame shift drive flight or super cruise in system is also relatively simple. Press J or whatever button you have binded it to and if you're not mass slot, you will start charging and then jump into super cruise. If you're using super cruise assist to get to your location, which is in the nav panel here, when you select your destination. Also, just an FYI, you have to be in Super Cruise to use Super Cruise Assist. You can't be in regular flight. I didn't know that when I first started. Then use it and it will take you to your target. But a much faster way to travel is doing it yourself and using the six second rule. So you're in Super Cruise and on your way to a destination and you can see the target, how far away it is in light seconds and how long it will take you to get there. When you see the time get to six seconds, you immediately throttle down to the middle of the white line next to your speed and keep it there until it tells you to exit Super Cruise. Another helpful tip is when in the galaxy map, you can also copy systems to the clipboard to be able to paste them into Inara or whatever other website or thing you need to paste them into. Next, I will talk quickly about ship combat, but most of it you should learn on your own. A ship combat is one of the most fun parts of the game. At least that's what I think. When you outfit your ship, you will have different options when it comes to the weapons fire mode. Option one is fixed weapons. This means the weapon is fixed and will only fire in the direction you are pointing. So yeah, that's fixed. The next is gimbaled. This means that the weapon will track your target within a certain range and area, but you still have to click or hold to fire. The final option is turreted. This means the weapons will track and fire at targets on their own, but each type has less damage. For example, I'll use pulse, pulse lasers. The highest DPS pulse lasers are fixed, then gimbaled, then turreted. So there is a trade-off for each type, which is a good balance. Speaking about your ship, it is important to know that you can never lose money on your ship. Whatever you buy your ship for and whatever modules you install and invest into it, you will get back when or if you sell it. So if you buy a ship, don't like it, you can sell it for the same amount as you got. So you're never wasting money. There is so much to learn in this beautiful game that I cannot go through it all. If you have something you would like explained, please put it in the comments and I'll try to answer it. If it needs a video on it, I'll also try and make a video. So that is some of the stuff that I wish I knew when I started. Now I'm going to show you how I made my first 50 million fast and was able to get some intermediate ships to expand into doing whatever I wanted. Again, this is what I did and I focused on combat to make money, but there are a million and one ways to make money and have fun. The most important thing to remember is if you don't enjoy this way and you don't enjoy what you're doing find something else that may, that you enjoy because doing that well will eventually make you a lot of money as well you know for example like exploring mining or trading so my start when you start you'll be in the pilot federation space this is essentially the tutorial zone if you leave it then you will not be allowed back in so make sure you are comfortable with the game before leaving i left almost straight away because i didn't know you couldn't come back but once you're comfortable go ahead and leave and you'll want to find a system that is at war you can go into the galaxy map and go to the map mode tab and filter by systems at war this will highlight systems at war in red but for some reason it will not highlight all of the warring systems so while you're on your way to the warring system check everyone you come into and if you see conflict zones in the navigation tab then you might have a winner once you see the conflict zones you will need to see if there's any large space stations in that system but you can't use space station outposts for this method so you go to the large space station dock and disembark your ship 
Once you're in there, you will see a war kiosk, which looks like this. Once there, you want to talk to the person and enlist in a faction war. You will get a choice in what conflict you can join, and for your first one, you want to join a low-level one. Click on it and join. Once this is done, a dropship will be ready to pick you up, and, you'll, and all you have to do is go to the elevators here, don't worry, they're almost always in the same place, and enter the hangar and board the dropship. The ship will take you to the war and drop you off. Once you are there, you will, want, you will be on foot with your team, fighting the enemy with your pistol. Try to kill as many enemies as possible, as everyone you kill will reward you with credits. Use your AI teammates to your advantage and target people who have low health. Also, while you're planet side, the energy in your suit will deplete to find a recharge station, which you can find on your mini-map along with ammo. When you find the station, bring out your tool with the 3 key or 4 key and click to recharge. By the end of the mission, press E and E again and you will be picked up and sent back to the station. Once there, you can go back to the conflict kiosk and redeem your awards. If done correctly, you should net around 400 to 600,000 credits. I'd recommend doing this two or three times. Once that is done, you'll have around 1.5 to 2 million credits, which should only take about 10 to 15 minutes depending on your skill. By this time, you'll want to upgrade your gear. So, we're going to go to Inara and go to the Outfitting and the Personal Equipment tab. You want to find a Dominator suit, a Manticore Executioner, and a Karma AR-50. This is the combination I used and it worked well, but you can experiment with whatever weapons that you like. In the right hand side of that page, you can search for the system that has that stuff. Copy and paste the system name that you are in to the corresponding section in Inara. And once that is done, show you the closest systems that have it. Go there and get that equipment. Once you have it, you can start making a lot more money. So now you wanna find a system that is at war and also has a high level conflict zone, which you will be able to see at another war kiosk. Then just do the high level combat zone. And at the end of each fight, you should earn a minimum of 5 million credits. You can grind that out as much for as much money as you like when i calculated you could earn 30 to 50 million in an hour depending on how good at combat you are and if you win every fight once you have the desired amount of money you want you can now either continue with that grind or you can buy and outfit almost any intermediate ship you would like if you want to go exploring i would recommend the diamondback explorer if you want to start mining maybe a killback or if you want to start ship to ship combat and pirate hunting i would suggest the imperial eagle Viper or Cobra. With the money you have, you can fully kit out almost any intermediate ship of your choice. I personally got the Diamondback Explorer and went exploring and came back with 250 million. So I have to say this again. This is what I did to allow me to really do whatever I wanted in the game. But I also enjoy doing this. I enjoyed ground combat, but I also did other stuff in between ground combat like pirate missions and trading. If you want to grind it, then you can, or you can just do this casually when you need extra cash. I really hope that this has helped some of you out there who might be stuck in the early game and have been looking for a quick way to get out and do what you want. I also hope that you have learned something today. Thank you so much for watching and please tell me in the comments what you're up to in Elite Dangerous. Thanks for watching and glory to Deval. This is just a side note, by the way. Um, I super appreciate everyone that has come this far and has supported me and watching these videos and subscribing. I need a new mouse. Uh, my Steel Series Rival 300 is nearly eight years old now and I'm looking for another one. So I would like suggestions. Should I just get another Steel Series Rival or should I get something else? Please put in the description, please put in the comments what mouse suggestions you have or what you're using at the moment. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day.